Welcome everybody here at the third day at SOTOM 2019. I'm pleased to introduce Adrian Pavier. Pavi? Pavi, <laughs> sorry, we trained, but <laughs> from France. And he will talk about integrating and validating open data in OS OSM using street pictures. Yeah. So let's see what he will tell us. Thank you, and hi everyone. Can you hear me correctly? Uh, yeah. So, uh, is everyone here aware of uh, what is open data? Is it clear for you what is open data or not? What do, who do know you, who knows about open data? Okay, so mostly everyone, so I will be brief on that. Open data is a data which is a geographical or not geographical, which can be opened by city councils, by governments, by some societies, and uh, the idea is that you can use it for another uh, use. The purpose is to make, to make uh, this data be reusable by other, uh, other people. In open data, you have uh, some, uh, sometimes very qualitative data, like uh, good quality, very exhaustive, very detailed. And sometimes you have uh, more or less trash. You have uh, things missing. You have no information in the, um, in the metada metadata. So it's quite poor. And we have to do some, uh, some sort of what is uh, good and what is not good. So it's quite complicated to use sometimes. At the contrary, in OpenStreetMap, we have a very rich attribute model. And most of the time, the point of interest, the highways, are very detailed. So we go very deep in the detail. But there is no guarantee on exhaustivity. Even if most of the time the mapping is quite exhaustive, nobody is here to say, OK, the map is complete. It's not something we do because it's a, uh, an open source project and it's uh, made by uh, people uh, contributing on their free time, mostly. So we, are, we have no guarantee. The data is there, but we are not sure it's complete. And last thing, we have street pictures. So you might be aware of uh, what street pictures are. These are pictures which are taken by people in the streets, uh, which are geolocated and hosted on projects like OpenStreetCam, like Mapillary, or Wikimedia Commons. <coughs> and the idea is that on the picture, you can see many details. You can see as good as if you were there. So it's very interesting as a, as a data source to use this kind of pictures. So we have, on some part, open data, which can be rich, which can be poor, depending of uh, the source of the data. We have OpenStreetMap, which is very rich in information, but we are not sure it can be complete. And we have the street picture, which, is, which are having many details and can be a source uh, to confirm if something is there and to describe it uh, more further. So how can we combine all, the, all this data to make the best uh, data source uh, possible in OpenStreetMap? Well, we would like to, to do something like that, maybe. Say, OK, the community is working on uh, its city and wants to uh, improve, for example, the tagging of a bus stop. So uh, we would like to review each bus stop, having the street, uh, street pictures around, and having a simple tool to show it on, the web, on a website so people can say, OK, this uh, bus stop is named ta, ta ta and it is accessible in wheelchair, and so on. So the idea was to, was to make this simple in order to improve OpenStreetMap. And so it's mostly what pick for review do. So you can access it on the, on the web. It's uh, online. And you can have access also to the source code. It's open source. And so, and so it works uh, that way. It's uh, mostly a website where you have mission. So you can start a mission in your city and say, OK, I want to improve wheelchair description on crossing. Or I want to add the kind of bicycle parking. You can do pretty any kind of mission as long as you have a bit of information in OpenStreetMap or on an open data source. And then some street pictures in your city. Otherwise, it, it won't work. So if I select one mission, for example, the crossings using wheelchair, I have this kind of uh, user interface where I can see on uh, the left where the feature I'm reviewing is located. For example, if this is a crossing. And on the right, I have all the street pictures available around. 
So it's only the pictures which are looking uh, directly at the feature. So that way you only have interesting pictures. And then you can review. And on this kind of, of uh, on this crossing, for example, we see just there that there is a possibility to pass by wheelchair, but maybe not on the other side. So in that case, I would say, okay, it's only one side which is accessible. And when I click on this answer, this uh, information is directly sent to the OpenStreetMap database and you have contributed without even knowing what is uh, a tag, what is a feature, what, what is node and so on. It's very simple. You can put, uh, you can make beginners using this and they will do the job. So it's also working on mobile phone. So if you want to, <laughs> so if you want to contribute on your mobile phone, is it also possible? So. It's very uh, responsive. So you have existing mission, but you can create your own mission if you want to start something on your city. So there is this uh, template system which allows to create uh, some mission based on existing models. So you have uh, like uh, 20 models which are available. I can make more if uh, necessary. And you then just uh, choose the area you want to create the mission on and you're ready to go. The, um, the tool will process the data and make it available as a mission so you can start reviewing. You can also create own mission from uh, scratch if you want to make something highly configured. So there you can choose where the data source you want to use is. If you want to use, for example, Osmos detection, so the quality insurance tool. So if you want to use Overpass, for example, or if you will want to use uh, mapillary detection, so you might be aware that mapillary can detect on its uh, picture if there is, a, for example, a fire hydrant and say, okay, there probably is a fire hydrant on this place, but we want to be sure that it is there before importing in OpenStreetMap. So then you can add some details on the mission and configure uh, how the people should answer a simple question. So it's quite a bit more complicated, but it allows advanced users to create their own mission. There is mainly two contributing modes on this tool, so complete existing OpenStreetMap data. So we take data from Overpass and we say, okay, I want to add this kind of information, which are accessibility, shelter, whatever. Or we can import open data. So we, make, we take um, information from a city council or government. I want to import into OpenStreetMap, but not in bulk. We want to import feature by feature to be sure that we are not importing something which doesn't exist in reality. So the data sources for uh, this now are mainly uh, the open data which is available from the Osmos tool. So there was another presentation of Osmos during the event, so you can uh, have a uh, look at it. Mainly what it does is that it takes the open data, it looks at the OpenStreetMap data and say, okay, this one is missing, this one is already on the database and can be completed and it's uh, making, you know, a conflation. And we can use mapillary feature detection, so for example, uh, detection of street lights, detection of benches and so on. So many examples of what uh, can be added uh, through uh, this tool. So street light, traffic signs, power station, post box. Mostly every kind of point of, inter of interest can be added this way. So it's made to be uh, very easy. And I will present you a live demonstration of this. So we are using some uh, open data set in France, which is uh, describing the power substation. So it's a technical thing in the uh, power, power grid. And there we have probably uh, a power substation here. And in the picture, I can see there this little white building. It's uh, very characteristic in France. So I know there is a power substation at this place. And if I want to correct a bit the position, here it looks quite exact, but for example, I can move it a bit like that and directly import the data and say, okay, the feature is there. I have adjusted its position and now it's in OpenStreetMap. So it's very simple. You can do it in uh, like thousands of this during an hour. So it's very simple. Here, for example, I can't see one. 
So I will say, okay, I can't see it, so I'm not sure, I will not import, I just skip. And then you do it for every, uh, every object, and you can add thousands of them uh, quite easily. So if, you, if we look back at, stat at uh, statistics, the project was around for uh, more than one year now, and uh, there are like uh, 600 uh, different users uh, which have already used it, and they uh, added like um, 100 or 1,000 objects, and for example, uh, we have uh, 2,800 uh, fire hydrants which have been added in the world. We have more than 11,000 uh, of uh, pedestrian crossings which have been improved in their description, so mostly saying if they are accessible in wheelchair. And we have like uh, 7,000 uh, power substation in front, so it's not that bad. So the tool is already doing a lot of things, but we want to go further because, as you see, we have only uh, two main data sources for now. We have to add open data in Osmos first if we want to use it in the picture review tool. So maybe one, one idea for the future will be to extend it to all open data sets. Like you can import your, your uh, CSV file or GeoJSON file and then directly create a mission. And maybe, but there will be some difficulties if we do that because every uh, data source has different attributes, different naming, and we have to make it uh, understandable by the OSM tagging system. So how do we, do, how do we convert this uh, data set into something OSM compatible? So maybe we can use the semantic web, uh, which is something uh, doing, uh, which has been around for a long time, but not used yet for this kind of application. Or maybe you can also think of uh, exporting directly from open data portals into XML OSM format, so that would be easier to, to use. So there is thing to do ar around this subject. We can also uh, try to make the data even before it is published, so we can help uh, maybe city councils or governments to make their data cleaner after, before they publish it, so maybe they could use pick for review internally to make the data more uh, described and more uh, qualitative. And maybe we can also store the result of the contribution in pick for review in some closed databases so they can use it internally, try to do the whole process by themselves, and then later publish it. And so pick for review is an open source project, so you can still uh, help us to make it even better. The main things we are looking for are translation. So we have like eight languages for now. I think there is a French, English, Japanese, uh, maybe Chinese also. Uh, I can't remember, there are like eight of them. And so you, if, you have a, if you want to make it available in your own language, you can start translating. Uh, I'm also pleased to have uh, always have the user feedback to make it better. So if you use it and find something lacking or some bug, uh, don't hesitate to contact me. And then also do uh, some uh, development work to make the new features available and the bug fixing. So yeah, you can uh, participate and uh, it will help make the tool better. So as a conclusion, uh, this tool is quite simple but makes uh, uh, us possible to take the best of the open data and open suite map. So we have quality of open suite map and exhaustivity of open data set. Uh, pictures make the data verifi verifiable uh, because we are sure that uh, the information is there. We have a, a date, a survey date, so things are quite clear of uh, where the information is coming from. And uh, I hope this is the start of an amazing data journey. So. Just a little conclusion before, uh, before the end. Quality is never an accident. It is always the result of intelligent effort. It's a quotation from John Ruskin, which is a writer and painter. Thank you all. So thank you, Evan, for your great talk and the introduction. Are there any questions in the audience? I really liked the idea of having a mission in order to improve data. 
And do you think it would be possible to do the same without a picture, but live, to go to check if somebody was wrong, to make like a nap? Because it, it, it looks like a game. And do you think we could extend it in other ways to improve the OSM data? Um, yeah, I think it's possible, but maybe it's not a peak for review which will be the best tool for this, because there are already uh, applications doing ground survey, like Street Complete, like uh, OSM on in some in some way. So there are already existing applications doing this. Uh, as it is a website and it's downloading a lot of data because you are getting the pictures which are quite uh, highly, um, uh, you know, having high resolution. So it's not meant for mobile uh, in the fact that it's quite using a lot of data. But um, it would be interesting to maybe push forward other applications to make them more fun and maybe uh, more easy to use. So that's why people going live on the ground and doing survey will be, it will be easier for them to contribute. But maybe not the, with picture review, it's not meant for it, but we maybe push forward the community to make tools uh, better uh, for ground survey. Hi, I'm Jonathan Brown from Canada. And one of the things I see a lack in building a bridge between open data and the OSM, um, there was a great presence at the Madrid International Open Data Conference of OSM, but not in uh, Buenos Aires, last one. The next one is in Nairobi, Kenya. I was wondering if it would be useful to think about combining what you've done with teach OSM and then do something as a session in yeah. Nairobi as part of the International Open Data Conference. Yeah, yeah for sure we can, we can think of ways to make it uh, more known and uh, available for more people. But uh, yeah, it's still something taking some time. So yeah, definitely local communities can use it and uh, maybe improve it. So I'm not sure if it answers the question, but. <laughs> like with the open data community yeah. and the OSM community. Oh, okay. Getting a more sustainable connection between those two yeah. communities. Yeah, and that's why it's interesting to use the Osmos tool uh, because it makes uh, synchronization between the open data set and what's in OpenStreetMap, but still it's something technical. We should definitely uh, go further on the cooperation with uh, open data uh, manager. It's something we do, for example, in France, we are trying to push forward this, uh, this, this um, subject, but I know it might not be the case in all countries, so yeah, definitely, uh, it's something uh, local communities should be aware and uh, maybe push forward the authorities to publish more open data and uh, see how they can work with OpenStreetMap in some cases. I was wondering, uh, do you often find that there are points that are nowhere near any kind of imagery? Are there points that are difficult to validate because nobody has driven Mapillary or OpenStreetCam near there? Uh, well, it can happen sometimes, but uh, most of the time we, we, still find the, um, we, we still find the features on the picture uh, because um, mostly the, the data is not that bad, the open data is not that bad. But it's uh, most of the time a, a lack of precision, like the feature is there, but it's like maybe uh, 50 meters away, so that could um, lead to some problem finding them because we are looking at exact position with a picture. So yeah, and sometimes we can't find it because it's like 50 meters away. So the idea is uh, mainly to integrate what's easy, what is easy to do and for the um, the complex cases, the 10 less percent of the data, we have to look further and maybe find it uh, somewhere. So, yeah, it's making the, the whole thing more easier, but we still have some cases to do manually, I would say. For questions, if there are more questions in the audience, there's one. Hi, uh, great, great talk and great tool. Um, one question, in your example with the power stations, uh, if there's actually not a power station, 
uh, you pressed on skip, does it mean that uh, the other people who will do this mission will have this question again and again? Or is there some way to say, okay, it definitely doesn't exist here? Well, in fact, there is a simple system to handle that. If uh, three different people skip uh, one feature, it is then ignored. Uh, it is uh, not shown to any other user. So um, as long as there is no new pictures of this area or uh, any change in the input data, we don't show it anymore to other users. So you have to have three different people skipping this feature before it is hidden. So that way if you just click, misclick on this thing, uh, it is not hidden for everyone for forever, I would say. So yeah, three skips and then it is in your, but uh, still it's a way to make this more secure to not lost feature which could be integrated, but uh, yeah. Uh, it looks like a great tool, it's a, it's a good job. Um, when, you, when you showed us the demo, the first thing that came to mind is, um, I mean, there's clearly machine learning that we could, or you could possibly add on the side. Uh, is that something that you've thought about or uh, something that could help uh, in the future? Yeah, and uh, in fact, uh, we are already indirectly using machine learning because we integrate the mapillary detection, which are done by machine learning. Uh, the idea is that we are using human verification to make the data uh, qualitative, to make sure there is something, because ma uh, machine learning is improving every day, but it's not 100% uh, quality, it's uh, maybe more than 19%, but in OpenStreetMap we are doing uh, very qualitative things, very, uh, making sure things are there, so that's why it's uh, mostly doing a uh, human job. And the idea of using machine learning will be to automate things, but uh, before, you know, uh, like uh, trying to, to detect new features and so on. And then we can uh, make people validate, okay, this one is very well detected and it is there. So I can put it on OpenStreetMap. Otherwise, we will have a, a lot of false positive in the database and it will be not useful. So that's the idea. Okay, so it looks like there are no more questions. So we thank Adrian again for the great talk. <laughs>